Spotify is not a music app. It's actually an audio network in the making. And I believe in 10 years time, it's going to be a lot like Google. People are going to use it to share, consume information, to learn new things, except that the consumption is going to be primarily through an audio format and not as much via text as is in the case with Google. This company is poised to transform its income statement in the coming years as it deploys audio verticals beyond music. The music vertical has some very poor unit economics because music labels keep most of the money that Spotify makes, 75%. But as Spotify adds new verticals like podcasts, audiobooks, and so forth, the unit economics are poised to change rapidly. And since the unit economics are going to change across a very, very large user base, which is nearing 1 billion, it's on its way to 1 billion users by the year 2030, I believe that the transformation of the unit economics is going to have an absolutely massive impact at the cash flow production level per share. Over the past year, we have arguably lived through an attention economy recession with consumers looking to spend more time doing analog things. And yet Spotify has grown its user base at record pace. And you can see this in the graph that I have here in my write up. Certainly the narrative about TikTok killing Spotify seems less plausible now. Here's a quote from Daniel Leck, the CEO during Q4 2023. Q4 is a very strong quarter. Mao grew by 28 million to 602 million. And we added 10 million net subscribers, finishing at 236 million. Both Mao and subscriber growth continue to be, and here's the important bit, above our historical trend and outperformed forecast. So what can we tell about a company that is growing its user base at record pace when most of the digital consumers worldwide cannot tolerate consuming more information, spending more time consuming content? or certainly have had less of a tolerance over the last few years. What I infer in this case is a company that has um, a superlative ability to engage people and to satisfy consumers. Spotify owes its unrelenting growth to the unmatched focus on audio consumers, as I was saying, and that is fundamentally why Apple and, Spot and, and Amazon, despite having much larger resources, has not, uh, have not been able to defeat this company. Now, the thing is that obviously deploying these new verticals has required a large financial commitment for Spotify. And so deploying them has taken a large toll on the financials. The market already did not like the fact that Spotify was keeping, uh, was giving 75% of the money that it makes to labels. And so this, um, this financial commitment, which has decreased margins or has not enabled them to grow as fast as they otherwise would have grown um, has not pleased the market. And so we've actually seen the stock tumble uh, for two years straight uh, from 2021 to 2023 towards the end of this year. And uh, but I'm still happy that I doubled my position last uh, winter because I believe that this company is going to do just fine in the long term because they have these organizational properties that, again, as I was saying, have enabled them to defeat Amazon and Apple <clears throat> over time, excuse me. Now, what I think is happening now is that Spotify has hit an inflection point. They've lapped their podcast investments. They've made around a $1 billion investment, which has enabled them to achieve critical uh, mass in the podcasting side. And some believe that, the, that there have been plenty of mistakes in these investments. There's some conversation back and forth. But for me, that $1 billion has certainly not derailed the company's future prospects. And in turn, what it has done is it has enabled Spotify to become a number one player in the podcasting space. Now, that investment is behind Spotify now. So what we are seeing this quarter and what we're going to see going forward is uh, the podcast investments no longer dragging the bottom line for Spotify. So um, in Q4 2023, podcasts were very close in management's words to being accretive to gross margins and to, to the company's financials in general. So as we go forward, and podcasts become accretive, I believe that Spotify's margins are going to continue increasing. Here's a general observation, which I believe you will find interesting, which is that when looking at growth companies, I'm not quite interested in a growth company that has positive earnings. Why? Because positive earnings lead to paying taxes. I'd rather have a company that detracts from what otherwise would be positive earnings via non-cash expenses, but then on the other side produces free cash flow. Free cash flow is the ultimate metric that I look at when looking at these long-term compounders. And it's a lot like the you know, Amazon and Tesla. They've been doing that for a long time. They've been losing money and they've been printing free cash flow. 
And that is exactly what I think this company has been doing. Um, if you look at Spotify's financials over the past few years, even when they were losing plenty of money on paper because of the podcasts, uh, margins were being compressed and so forth, this company was printing free cash flow. So that is how I look at this company. And by the way, definitely, if you want to become a better investor and learn the mental models that enable me to analyze companies like Tesla, AMD, Palantir, uh, Spotify in this case, which I think is going to translate into a great success, check out my two-hour deep dive course in which I teach you to analyze companies in depth on your own. Uh, for just 48 hours, the course is selling for $150 instead of $199. And I personally believe that the return on investment in this course is absolutely macrocosmical. Uh, I'm giving you the mental models that have taken me 10 years to develop, that have been tested in the field. They've been successful a sufficient amount of time, a number of times for me to do this full time. And so I believe that for $150, it's going to be a great addition. So what we have um, during this quarter is a very interesting free cash flow print, which points to the inflection point that I was talking about. Uh, as I was saying, free cash, flow uh, free cash flow levels have been satisfactory for a long time. I'm seeing a graph here in which I can see Spotify <clears throat> printing free cash flow from positive free cash flow from Q1 2021 to Q3 2023. But we see an uptick in Q4 2023. And what's happening here, as I was saying, is that the podcasts are no longer dragging the company's bottom line. We are going through an inflection point. Management says that there's a large component of timing in this free cash flow print, but uh, they also say that we can expect this to be the new normal. And per my understanding of the company, structurally speaking, I believe that this is definitely <clears throat> the case. I think we have turned the corner here. Now, what's, what's interesting is that the, the key enabler for this transition that Spotify is going through is the organizational evolution. Uh, Daniel Eck and co, Daniel Eck, the CEO, have been working hard to transform the company over the past few years. Um, his unflinching focus um, and, and his, his way of tinkering with the Spotify machine is the primary reason I believe they have succeeded and for which I believe they will succeed going forward. Here's a quote from uh, Q4 2023, which is uh, insightful in this sense. So looking into 2024, you should expect a continuation of what you saw in 2023. Strong product development, which leads to strong growth, but with an increased focus on monetization and efficiency, which in turn drives profitability. So previously, Spotify was focused on the product. That is why Amazon and Apple could not outpace this company, despite Spotify having much uh, lesser resources. And now Daniel Eck has integrated into the company's DNA the focus on monetization. So I have, been, I have seen Daniel Eck and co. doing this for the past year or so. This is the first time that I see this qualitative observation translating into financial progress. And I think, you know, per the free cash flow print, very impressively so. And because of now, this is the first time that I actually see him manifestly talking about this. Um, I think that this is, I think that going forward, this is going to be a historical point in Spotify's um, evolution because the company is no longer about product. It's also about uh, monetization. And I believe that this is, this is really, we're turning a corner here. Here's a quote from him, uh, which, I, which is revealing again in this sense. He says, how do you on the one and save and how do you tell people that you want to grow? So I don't think it's either or, I think it's both. And so I think we need to become more efficient by deprioritizing some of the existing things, but we also need to invest in some of the new. So as many of you know, I'm a firm proponent of using qualitatives to front run the financials. And I, I have a deep understanding of the company and I really believe that uh, going forward, Spotify is actually gonna print a fair bit of cash. Now, on the financials, what we've seen definitely over the past year is <clears throat> OPEX as a percentage of revenue declining from 32.6% uh, to 28.74% since Q3 2022 to date. So this has, you know, this has aided the free cash flow production for sure. But what is particularly interesting this quarter is that OPEX is actually up from Q3 2023 to Q4 2023. It's up 2%. And despite the relatively larger OPEX, cash from operations, <coughs> excuse me, and free cash flow are ticking up. Here's a quote from Paul Vogel, the CFO. Finally, free cash flow was positive 396 million euro in Q4 
while some of the strength was timing related, as I was saying, we remain confident that we've entered a new chapter in terms of expanding the business, a business with cash generation potential. Considerable quarter over quarter increases in gross margins are visible in the graph that I have in front of me in the screen, which you can see in the written form of the deep dive. Gross margins are back to a level not seen since Q3 2021, due primarily, quote unquote, to favorability in the podcast business. As I was saying, the podcasts are no longer growing on the um, on the overall financial profile of the company. So as I was saying, I believe that the uptick in the free cash flow generation is due to podcasts nearing um, the accretive state and uh, music margins continuing to improve. What I think is, is going to happen here further is that, and per management's comments, the audiobook vertical is not going to cost much capital to deploy. Management is guiding for expanding margins during 2024, despite the investment in audiobooks. So what um, I think that with, po with podcasts becoming accretive, with audiobooks coming online, which I think are going to expand ARPU meaningfully and not requiring much of an investment, uh, I think, again, we're going to see margins expanding. We're going to see uh, growing free cash flow prints over time. Uh, ARPU has grown uh, in the last few years, uh, sorry, over the last year with the price increase that Spotify passed in 2023. That has obviously aided the free cash flow print. Um, and however, on a less positive note, advertising revenue continues to grow hand in hand with the platform. Part of the thesis of Spotify becoming a Google of audio is that the advertising business grows non-linearly non eventually, right? And so if you think about it, as Spotify deploys more audio verticals like podcasts, audiobooks, and so forth, that all becomes highly monetizable inventory because then you begin to have people listening to different topics uh, via podcasts and audiobooks. And so it's relatively easy to target in terms of ads. However, advertising came in at 14% of revenue, essentially flat in, in relative terms year over year. So we're not seeing that expansion just yet. However, in my studies of Roku and Netflix, which I wrote a deep dive on Roku last month, um, I basically see advertisers coming back to the market, at least in the online space. So Spotify definitely has the inventory. They've been building out the ad tech stack for some time, and that's still going to require some work. But I believe that with the advertisers coming back to the market over the next couple of quarters, we can, assuming normal economic conditions and that we don't go back into some sort of a recessionary state, I think that we're going to see the business picking back up. As previously mentioned, the above dynamics, so podcasts being accretive, audiobooks not, not requiring much CapEx, ARPU going up, OPEX as a percentage of revenue overall trending down, except for the tick up uh, from Q3 to Q4. All of this is yielding a healthier cash flow profile, especially at the free cash flow level, which I'm very impressed with. And so this is bolstering an already fortified balance sheet. Uh, Spotify ended the quarter uh, with cash and short-term investments of over 4.6 billion, debt of just 1.3. Uh, and then we have um, cash from operations coming in at 428 million and uh, free cash flow coming in at 427 million. So this company looks to be set to, to be strong going forward. I have no financial concerns about the company and I'm very excited. I, I don't want to use the term excited. I try never to get too happy or too sad because that is just a much better position to be in mentally when dealing with things in the stock market. But um, <clears throat> this company is definitely positioned to do well in, in 2024. And definitely the stock um, doesn't quite reflect, I think, the strength of this business. So concluding, the thesis is evolving favorably as uh, more folks use Spotify to listen to anything. It's no longer a music app. It's gradually an audio network with the potential to expand unit economics meaningfully. The company has engaged a number of drivers to increase operating leverage, with ha which have definitely driven the bottom line in Q4 2023. And again, as I was explaining earlier, more in the sense of free cash flow than in the traditional sense of earnings. Assuming relatively normal economic circumstances, we should see financials meaningfully improve from here, with the new verticals becoming accretive in 2024. Going forward, as I was saying, if advertising kicks in, then we'll, we will have <clears throat> additional nonlinear tailwinds. And I think that the um, most of the upside in the coming few years is with Spotify becoming a super app. 
Um, Spotify has immense potential in connecting audio consumers with audio creators. And for now, this can't quite happen because of the terms with Apple. About the relatively abusive terms that uh, Apple came back with, with the DMA, um, Daniel X said the following in the call. He says, now the good news, I guess, from the investor standpoint, <clears throat> I know that there were initially some questions about whether or not this would be a downside for Spotify. And he says, I don't think that's the case because Spotify can essentially pick to stay in the old terms and not go to the new ones. But of course, the new ones are not favorable and they are not beneficial for Spotify in terms of becoming a super app. So having said that, um, <clears throat> the regulatory environment looks a little bit choppy. No um, immediate great risks for Spotify, except that the, the upside of becoming a super app, I think it's going to take some time to materialize. But other than that, we have a growing operating leverage, expanding unit economics. We have a number of drivers that um, <clears throat> are set to increase Spotify's operating leverage over 2024. And in general, I'm happy with the investment. As I said, I doubled down on this investment at $97.5. Uh, it's up um, handsomely at the moment, and I believe that in 2024, it's um, the business can definitely improve a lot, and we will see if the market decides to to revalue the the shares accordingly. So thank you very much, and until next time, stay tuned for my AMD update, which I know a lot of you are going to enjoy, because uh, I know that a lot of you are AMD investors. So see ya.